United Nations is not a friend of democracy. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. As to the UN, things will be different after January 20th. NATO is obsolete. The you Ukraine, really believe NATO is obsolete? I think it's largely obsolete, yeah. It's got to be changed. Some high-profile Republicans now threatening to try and yank funding from the United Nations. I will veto any attempt by the UN to impose its will on the Jewish state. Uh, if Donald Trump is elected uh, on the basis of what he has said already, uh, I think it's without any doubt that he would be dangerous. Uh, it's nothing that should be taken seriously. NATO remains an indispensable engine for effective international security cooperation. The USA has elected Donald Trump to the White House. What's this mean to the world and how are these events related to biblical prophecy? We've explained to you who the Lost Ten Tribes are today in our other teachings, and we've shown you when the Jubilee Cycles are and what they mean in prophecy. How are we to understand the election of Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States in this 120th Jubilee Cycle? What's it mean? Can he be the Cyrus of Isaiah 45, as some are saying? What do the 70 weeks of Daniel have to do with Donald Trump? What is the curse of Balaam? What's the worship of Baal Peor? And again, what does any of this have to do with the USA, the United Nations, and Donald Trump? Also, Daniel said that in the middle of this 70th week, the covenant made with any would end. What is that covenant, and when is the middle of the 70th week? Right now, we are in the time of Jacob's trouble. Is 2017 really the Jubilee year and the start of the Great Tribulation? What does all this mean, and how is it going to affect you and your loved ones? Jeremiah said that we've inherited lies from our forefathers. We are surrounded by voices saying things that just are not true. Join us as we peel back the onion layers of lies that you could see what the ancient scriptures foretold are blazoned across the evening news today. It is time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump has threatened to pull out of NATO. Do you think the United States needs to rethink U.S. involvement in NATO? Yes, because it's costing us too much money. And frankly, they have to put up more money. They're going to have to put some up also. We're not, we're, we're paying disproportionately. It's too much. And frankly, it's a different world than it was when we originally conceived of the idea and everybody got together. On Saturday, Donald Trump once again accused U.S. allies of not pulling their weight in the NATO military alliance, despite a call from President Barack Obama to tone down his foreign policy rhetoric. Trump telling the Washington Post, quote, we certainly can't afford to do this anymore. NATO is costing us a fortune. And yes, we are protecting Europe with NATO, but we're also spending a lot of money. When you look at our military budget, it's very interesting. And everyone sees it's many, many times higher than the second one. But it's not really for us. It's because we're defending everybody else. We're defending the whole world. So should America be the leader of NATO or not necessarily? I think, I think NATO may be obsolete. NATO is obsolete. The you Ukraine, really believe NATO is obsolete? I think it's largely obsolete, yeah. It's got to be changed. Donald Trump has threatened to tear up the Paris Agreement. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. More than 190 countries are gathered here discussing how to implement the Paris Accord from last year. But questions are swirling over the future of the deal following the election of Donald Trump, who's vowed to pull the United States out of the agreement. Trump is a longtime climate denier. I want to make a special appeal to the president-elect of the United States, Donald Trump, for a personal change of heart and a public change of policy on the issue of climate change. The United States, the largest economic power in the world, the second largest greenhouse gas emitter, must respect the commitments they have undertaken. Donald Trump has threatened the United Nations. The United Nations is not a friend of democracy. It's not a friend to freedom. It's not a friend even to the United States of America, where, as you know, it has its home. 
and it surely is not a friend to Israel. Friday, when the United Nations voted to rebuke Israel, the current ambassador to the UN told the world the Obama administration would not get involved, skipping the vote. Less than an hour later, Donald Trump sent his own message on Twitter. As to the UN, things will be different after January 20th. When was the last time you saw the United Nations make a settlement of some war? You don't see it. It's like a country club, folks. We pay for a tremendous percentage of it, and we always get wrong end of it. <laughs> I will veto any attempt by the UN to impose its will on the Jewish state. Donald Trump has upset the EU leadership. European establishment figures have been lining up to ask for some clarity as to what the new position is between Europe and its supposed oldest friend over the Atlantic. A strong NATO is good for the United States and it is good for Europe. American voters' choice for the next leader is widely seen as a protest against the status quo then. Now predictions are being made that Europe's establishment needs to watch its back somewhat. There are a few elections on the way in the EU, with politicians once dismissed as fringe, now feeling buoyed by what's happened across the Atlantic. To understand what's happening now in the world, we must understand where we are in the six millennial days allotted to man. God said in Genesis 6.3, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, for that he also is flesh. Therefore shall his days be a hundred and twenty years. The word for years in Hebrew is shana, and it means a revolution of time, and can be understood to say a hundred and twenty jubilee cycles. This is what many assume to be a hundred and twenty multiplied by fifty, to equal six thousand years for man. We are at the end of those 6,000 years. We are in that final 120th Jubilee cycle. Get the book, Remembering the Sabbatical Year of 2016, from Exibris, from Amazon, or from SightedMoon.com for a detailed explanation of this. We are on the dawn of entering that seventh millennial rest in just a very few short years' time. Again, all scripture are for our education and correction. Are we going to listen and learn from those scriptures? Just before Israel was to cross the Jordan into the Promised Land, we read in Numbers how Israel was joined to Baal Peor. Although Balaam could not curse Israel, he did counsel King Balak on how he might get the upper hand over Israel because Balaam desperately wanted to receive the rewards Balak was offering. This is recounted in the following scripture. Revelation 2.14 But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. What does eating have to do with fornication? When you understand the rituals involved in this worship of Peor, then you will understand this statement. The worship of Baal Peor involve the most perverted acts between the temple prostitutes and Baal devotees, all done for a profit. The ritual specifically designed to debase the devotees involve the exposure of the prostitutes' genitalia and their direct oral exchange of body fluids and waste products. In these rituals, the prostitutes assumed a dominatrix donor role and the men the submissive receptor role. The rituals in establishing the power of the feminine over the masculine work to invert the normative Hebrew social structure from patriarchal to matriarchal, and the arrestment of the development of men in the stage of irresponsible boys instead of maturing them into men of principle. What was the stumbling block that Balaam offered to King Balak? It was the worship of Baal Peor. After Balaam departed from Moab, we see the ramifications of his instruction as Israel joined itself to Baal Peor. Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Numbers 25, 1-3. Knowing what the sin of Peor was, is it any wonder 
that due to the sin of Peor, Israel was judged by a plague that killed 24,000. Look, these women caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor, and there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Numbers 31, 16. Because he taught the enemies of Israel how to ensnare them in this sin, Israel later killed Balaam, Joshua 13, 22, who became an object lesson of a false prophet. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, 2 Peter 2, 15. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain and have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah, Jude 1.11. The Lord himself gives his perspective of the incident of Peor through Hosea in chapter 9 and verse 10. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your forefathers as the earliest fruit of the fig tree in its first season. But they came to Baal Beor and devoted themselves to shame, and they became as detestable as that which they loved. Baal Peor literally means Lord of the open hole. Regardless of the purpose for which God designed the different parts of the body, Baal Peor's devotees relished in using every opening for sexual gratification, and thus he was the god of anal and oral sex. The practice of its perversion involved men, women, and even children and animals. This is what Baal Peor worship is. Anyone can easily see that the worship of Baal Peor exists today, not only in the porn industry, but all across what's called the entertainment industry. We have musicians that sing about the acts of Baal Peor that regularly make it to the top of the popularity charts. There are at least 25 number one songs since 1972 that promote oral and anal sex, songs that your own children have memorized sometimes without knowing what they mean. So-called artists like this are nothing more than modern-day Baal Peor temple prostitutes who glorify the use of every orifice for lascivious gratification, evoking the audience to worship of Baal Peor. What does any of this have to do with Donald Trump being elected to the highest power in the world? Fast forward to Stockholm, Sweden in 1972 and the creation of the United Nations Environmental Program. The formation of the UN Environmental Program in June of 1972 by 113 nations was the beginning of a worldwide covenant to protect the environment. But one of the first things they added to this covenant was the Declaration of Human Rights, which was actually created at the end of World War II in 1948 to prevent another genocide. What does human rights have to do with saving the panda bear or the blue whale? Nothing at all. Something else is taking place here, very subtly right in plain view. The Declaration of Human Rights created in 1948 in the United Nations was then expanded in 2011 to accept and protect the rights of the LGBT community, that is, the lesbians, gay, bisexual, and transgendered. Listen to Hillary Clinton in 2011 supporting the LGBT rights at the UN. But the obstacles standing in the way of protecting the human rights of LGBT people rest on deeply held personal, political, cultural, and religious beliefs. Sixty years ago, the governments that drafted and passed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights were not thinking about how it applied to the LGBT community. It is a violation of human rights when governments declare it illegal to be gay. Listen to President Obama pushing LGBT rights when he speaks. In, in 34 states, you can be fired just because of who you are or who you love. That's wrong. We've got to change it. There's a bipartisan bill moving forward in the Senate that would ban discrimination against all LGBT Americans in the workplace now and forever. We need to get that passed. 
When you start treating people differently because they're different, that's the path whereby freedoms begin to erode. If somebody, a law-abiding citizen, and not harming anybody, the idea that they are going to be treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. The latest push for the LGBT rights through the United Nations Environmental Program is the inclusion of the transgendered rights which were enacted into hate crime laws in Canada by Justin Trudeau and the push for transgender washrooms and equality in the U.S. in 2016. I'm proud to announce that tomorrow, on the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, we will be tabling a bill in the House of Commons to ensure the full protection of transgender people. It was then called the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, also known as Agenda 21. In 1995, this covenant was called the Kyoto Accord. Then in 2009, it was known as the COP15 in Copenhagen. Then we had the Rio Plus 20 Summit in 2012. And today, the latest manifestation of this covenant is the Paris Agreement, signed by 197 nations out of 197 nations worldwide in 2016, including the USA under John Kerry. This was made into law on November 2nd, 2016, rushing it through before President-elect Donald Trump could take office in January 2017. Today, what started out as the United Nations Environmental Program in 1972 to save the environment has morphed into the mechanism by which LGBT rights are being pushed upon all those who have signed on to this covenant agreement with many nations, the Covenant of Baal Peor. Daniel 9.27 speaks of a covenant made with many that would be during that 70th week. Today is no different than when Balaam instructed Balak how to get the Israelites to sin by telling the Moabite women and children to perform oral and anal sex with the Israelite men. Satan today has caused the descendants of Israel in these last days to again be deeply involved in the worship of Baal Peor through pornography, strip clubs, lewd and immoral acts, in our songs, movies, and the things we watch on TV. We have accepted it as the new norm, and as a nation, we have encouraged other nations also to accept and embrace this disgusting behavior. It's going to take President-elect Donald Trump four years before he can get out of the Paris Agreement. Many other world leaders say it's irreversible. Well, I assume that Donald Trump will try and leave the Paris Agreement. It will take him four years because of the structure of the agreement. He could try and move faster, but I think he would find that very difficult to get through Congress. Uh, a warning uh, for President-elect Donald Trump in the United States from the French leader, François Hollande. You cannot backtrack, you cannot get out of the commitments to fighting climate change that, that President Obama signed last year. That's right. So he seemed to have a very consistent message today, no matter who he was speaking to. He, he said it on Twitter as well a little bit before he spoke actually to France 24 a little earlier. And the word he repeated is irreversible. This Paris Agreement is irreversible, irreversible en droit, irreversible in law and in conscience. That's what he said on Twitter uh, a little bit before he used the same language uh, in an interview uh, given to our own network and uh, picked up here by AP. French President François Hollande calls the Paris deal irreversible. Now that's echoing kind of the, the, the spirit of what uh, Ban Ki-moon has said also. He's saying the climate deal is unstoppable. That's the word that's being picked up in headlines. Even Beijing, which has been seen as uh, a country that would be very difficult to bring into the fold of the Paris Agreement. Beijing also warned uh, Donald Trump against defying the world by killing the climate deal. The word week that Daniel speaks of is the Festival of Weeks, which is a 49-day period of time and then a 50th day the next day. The Jubilee cycle is exactly the same, a 49-year period of time followed by the 50th year. This covenant made with many began with the United Nations Environmental Program in Stockholm, Sweden in 1972. One week or one Jubilee cycle later is June 2020. June 2020 will be the fourth year of Donald Trump's administration. This 120th Jubilee cycle began in 1996 and goes until 2045. The middle of this Jubilee cycle, when Israel, that is all 12 tribes, is to be cut off, is again 2020. The end of the 69th week, or the 69th Jubilee cycle, is 1996. 
Daniel 9.25 Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the command to restore and build Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in times of affliction. And after sixty-two weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the ruler shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end of it shall be with the flood. And ruins are determined until the end shall be war. The year Moses was told to go and get Israel took place in the 50th Jubilee cycles since the creation of Adam. 70 Jubilee cycles later brings us to this same 120th Jubilee cycle that we are in right now. Again, all of this is explained in detail in our book, The 2300 Days of Hell. Get it now at Exibris, at Amazon, or at SightedMoon.com. President Trump has said he would tear up the Paris Agreement. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement and stop. Unbelievable. And stop all payments of the United States tax dollars to UN global warming programs. President Trump has also threatened NATO because they do not pull their fair share. The U.S. pays more than anyone else. President Trump has threatened the United Nations by stopping billions of dollars going to the UN, which would be distributed to other nations. We will also cancel billions in global warming payments to the United Nations, money that we don't even know what they do with it. We don't even know what they do with it. And use that money to support America's environmental infrastructure. For the past seven decades, the U.S. has spent hundreds of millions of dollars annually to guarantee German security. Although Germany has steadfastly refused to honor a NATO pledge to spend 2% of its GDP on defense spending, Germans are now offended that Trump has asked them to pay their fair share for their own defense. Although President Obama's foreign policy missteps have made Europe much less safe than it was eight years ago, European elites have overlooked Obama's mistakes because he's a globalist who seems to favor recreating the U.S. in the European image. Trump, by contrast, is a nationalist who wants to rebuild the U.S. in the American, not the European image. European anti-Americanism is certain to escalate in the years ahead. Europe's media establishment has greeted Donald Trump's election victory with vitriol not seen since the George W. Bush presidency, when anti-Americanism in Europe was at fever pitch. Since the American election in November 9th, European television and radio and print media have produced an avalanche of negative stories, editorials, and commentary that seethe with rage over the outcome of the vote. European criticism of Trump goes far beyond the simple displeasure with the man who will be the next president. The condemnation reveals a deep-seated contempt for the United States and for the American voter who democratically voted a candidate committed to restoring American economic and military strength. The UK voted to leave the EU. Brexit shocked the world and the EU and many in the UK. November 8, 2016. Again, the world was shocked when Donald Trump won the U.S. elections to be its next president. What's going on? Could it be the very thing that Israel was told to do by Moses in the Baal Peor incident? Or is it also what we are told in Revelation? Revelation 18.4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you may not receive of her plagues. The woman that was killed by Phineas was named Cosby, and her name means to lie, or deceive, or to make a liar. Brexit has left this false, deceiving woman, known in the Bible as the great whore that rides the beast. Now the USA is going to leave this same whore to whom they have given billions of dollars. And this great whore, known as Europa, is upset with the children of Israel. Laban chased after Jacob when he fled. Esau then came out to meet Jacob with 400 of his men. Laban was in the north and Esau in the south. 
Europe is about to chase after Israel, the UK, and the US with intent to cause harm. This woman that we are to come out of is the EU. Daniel spoke of her when he saw the four world ruling empires. Daniel 2, 36 through 43. This is the dream, and we will tell its meaning before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wherever the sons of men, the beasts of the field, and the birds of heavens live, he has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom lower than you, and another third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, since iron crushes and smashes all things. And as the iron that shatters all these, it will crush and shatter. And as to that which you saw, the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of iron, because you saw the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. And as you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mix themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cling to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. The great horror we read about in Revelation is revealed in the myth of Europa. The beast that Daniel is speaking about goes from Babylon, to Persia, to Greece, and finally to the Roman Empire, which today encompasses Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. This is also the King of the North and the South. Europe is historically Europa, and today is projected through the UN, NATO, and this Paris Treaty. Through all three of these methods, she and the UN pushes Baal Peor the God of the Holes on the rest of the world. The word for mixed is Arab. In its root, Arab, it means among other things, to braid, to intermix, technically to traffic as if by barter, to give or to take pledge, basically to enter into business or social contract. Daniel is speaking of this end time mixing of nations that will not adhere to one another but remain separate those of the Islamic faith just will not assimilate with the iron will of the German people. We see this right now taking place in Europe with the mass invasion of Islamic people invited by the German Chancellor. Multiculturalism just does not work with Islam. You know, when you look at the migration, there's so many men, and there's so many men that look strong to me. I'm pretty good at analyzing things. I say, where are all the women? You see so few women, and they look strong, and they're young. It doesn't matter if you open up your arms to take them in. It doesn't matter if you hand them welfare checks. It doesn't matter if they come into your country. They do not let go of their past way of life. They do not assimilate with our culture. And more than anything, you will have a percentage of these people that are just flat out radicalized. I mean, they're men, they're mostly men, and they're strong men. These are physically young, strong men. They look like primetime soldiers. Now, it's probably not true, but where are the women? One of the other things that is so striking in this, of course, is, and you can tell this if you go to any of the points of entry, whether the Italian islands or the Greek islands, this is a very strange uh, refugee crisis because the vast majority of the people coming in are young male. Ordinarily, people fleeing wars would be of both genders, young, old, male, female. This is overwhelmingly young men. And the questions are obvious. If these are legitimate refugees, where are the women? Where are the children? Come out of her, my people. And quit the UN, that is the message from Sarah Palin to President-elect Donald Trump, the former Alaska governor making this recommendation after the Security Council's vote on Israeli settlements. Come out of her, my people. Do you think the United States needs to rethink U.S. involvement in NATO? Yes, because it's costing us too much money. We're, we're paying disproportionately. It's too much, and frankly, it's a different world than it was when we originally conceived of the idea. 
come out of her, my people. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. Come out of her, my people. 70 million people have said we must leave the European Union. We now need a Brexit government. Come out of her, my people. British Prime Minister Theresa May announced on Sunday that she will trigger the process to leave the European Union without unnecessary delays. Come out of her, my people. We ought to take that money that's going to the UN and make it available to veterans who have served under the US flag and make sure they get the benefits they need. We are getting zero benefits. We're getting embarrassed by the actions of the UN. That's money that ought to be spent on American servicemen and service women. And I hope Donald Trump makes it one of the first acts of his presidency. Come out of her, my people. And so Lindsay and I today are joining and filing, filing legislation that would end all U.S. taxpayer funding for the U.N. unless and until they reverse this resolution. Come out of her, my people. Many now finding that the chaos isn't over even if they make it to land. It was evacuated, simply overwhelmed by migrants. It's not that speaker that we're inviting who has these extreme radical views, as you say. These are general views that every Muslim actually has. Every Muslim believes in these things. The seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine in Joseph's day is a prophecy for us today. When we compare the Jubilee cycle of Joseph to ours today, we can easily see that the seven years of plenty for Egypt, which today is Babylon the Great, or the Great Whore, begins in the year 2020 and lasts for seven years. Our book, The 2300 Days of Hell, explains how in the middle of this final Jubilee cycle, which is in the year 2020, this beast will attack Israel, that is, all 12 tribes, of which the United Kingdom and the USA are leading tribes and Judah another. Daniel 8 speaks of these 2300 days in which Israel will be hunted and killed and enslaved, just as the Leviticus 26 curse for not keeping the sabbatical years warns. Here we are warned of the sword that comes in the fourth sabbatical cycle. We are now in that fourth sabbatical cycle. The 2300 days ends when the two witnesses begin at the Feast of Trumpets in 2026, and they will lead the remnant back to the land of Israel. Come out of her, my people. Get out of the entanglement of the UN climate change initiatives. Get out of the UN that takes billions from you and condemns you. Get out of NATO that uses you to protect them. Come out of her, my people.